All right, let's take a look at how to draw some displacement time graphs. And in this video, we'll use an example involving a swimmer named Sam who swims for 30 minutes every day before school. Now he takes about five minutes to complete one lap and the pool is an impressive 100 meters long. So not a very realistic situation here, but good enough to get ourselves some experience with displacement time graphs. So let's sketch a displacement time graph to describe Sam's swim. Now we know he takes about five minutes to complete one lap. And one lap in a pool is swimming from one end of the pool to the opposite end and back. So he needs to swim that 100 meter length and then back another 100 meters in five minutes, which means he'll swim the length of the pool in two and a half minutes. So what's this going to look like on our displacement time graph? Well, he's going to start at a displacement of zero. And after two and a half minutes, he should have a displacement of 100 meters. And that's when he's at the opposite end of the pool, 100 meters away from where he started. So assuming he's moving at a constant rate, the first part of the graph would look something like this. Okay, two and a half minutes to travel 100 meters. And then in the next two and a half minutes, well, that's when he's traveling back to the starting position. And that would look like this. So by five minutes, he's completed his one lap. He swam 100 meters to the other end of the pool and 100 meters back to his displacement of zero. And this will just continue over and over again. Two and a half minutes go by and he swims to the other side of the pool. And then two and a half minutes pass and he's back to his starting position. And we can just keep doing this. There is something that we've done here that's not very realistic. Not, not that this problem is at all realistic to begin with, but notice these sharp peaks here, you know, these, these sharp points on our graph. That implies that Sam gets to the other side of the pool and instantly he's traveling in the opposite direction at the same speed that he was on his way to the other side of the pool. Now that's not realistic. As we know, Sam would have to slow down a bit once he gets to the other end of the pool, turn around and then gradually speed up uh, for his journey back to where he started. So what we should probably do to make this a little bit more realistic is just slightly, you know, curve the tops of these peaks and curve these points down here to show that he slowed down and then sped up again, even if it happened very quickly. But for the sake of this lesson and these graphs, we're going to just stick with these points because they're easier to draw and it gives us the experience that we need with creating displacement time graphs. Okay, let's move on now. Suppose the pool was lengthened to an unbelievable 150 meter uh, length. Okay, so Sam's still going to be swimming at the same speed. How would this change the graph? Well, what can we say? We know that before Sam did a lap in five minutes, which means he did 100 meters to the other end of the pool and 100 meters back in five minutes. Now that's 200 meters in five minutes. But now the pool is 150 meters long, which means to swim to the opposite side and back is a total of 300 meters. Now, how long is it going to take Sam to swim 300 meters? Well, he's swimming at the same speed. Now, he did do 200 meters in five minutes, which means he could do 100 meters in half of five minutes, which is two and a half minutes. Now, if he could do 100 meters in two and a half minutes, how long is it going to take him to swim 300 meters? Well, it's going to be three of these, and that is seven and a half minutes. 2.5 times three is seven and a half minutes. So now a lap that is there to the opposite side of the pool and back is going to take him seven and a half minutes. So what's this going to look like on our displacement time graph? Well, uh, full lap in seven and a half minutes. So he's going to get to the other side of the pool in half of that time, which is... Well, 3.75 minutes. So that's going to look like this. Oops, very bad drawn line, badly drawn line there. Let me try that again. There we go. That's a little bit better. And in seven and a half minutes, he's going to be back to the other side. So now how many laps is he actually going to get in? Well, it's not going to be six like it was before. Let's just keep doing this. And all I'm doing is making it so that, um, you know, this peak here is 3.75 minutes past that, uh, that point there. And let's see here. 
well, I think we can tell already, two laps in 15 minutes means that he's going to get four laps in that uh, half an hour time. All right. There we go. Half an hour. Okay. And that's it. Moving on. Let's go back to the 100 meter pool. Uh, when Sam started his daily swims, he was in poor condition or poor shape. And after completing his second lap, he'd become tired and slow down on each consecutive lap. How would this uh, affect the graph? Well, the start of the graph is going to be the same as our first graph in that uh, every five minutes he's going to do a lap. So that's going to look something like this. We'll just do what, what we did before. All right, so there's our first two laps. Now after that he starts to slow down, which means he's still going to be swimming that 100 meter length of the pool there and back, but it's going to take him longer than five minutes. So perhaps, you know, instead of taking two and a half minutes to swim um, across the pool, maybe now it takes him, well, let's just say three minutes. So something like this. And you will notice that the line is no longer as steep as it was before. Right? And now perhaps on the next lap, maybe it takes him four minutes, just, you know, possibly four minutes to get across that length of the pool. So that would look like perhaps something like this. And then, okay. And then maybe, you know, for that final one, maybe he doesn't even get all the way there and back. Maybe he just gets to the other side of the pool and he has to get out because he's just too tired. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Notice that the line segments get less steep um, as we go on because he's slowing down. And let's finish off with one more situation here where after a few months, Sam began swimming the front crawl on the first half of his lap and the butterfly on the second half. Now for Sam, the butterfly is about twice as fast as the front crawl and Sam only manages to complete four laps in the half hour. So let's graph this situation. So this is interesting. I don't know if this is typical of, of swimming strokes, but Sam's butterfly is twice as fast as his front crawl. So we gotta remember that. And he also only completes four laps. Now we've seen the situation where he completes four laps. Each lap ended up taking seven and a half minutes. Of course, you could just divide 30 minutes by four. You'll get that seven and a half minutes. But what we need here is in that seven and a half minutes, we need his butterfly stroke to be twice as fast as his front crawl. And let's just remind ourselves which comes first. Uh, he does the front crawl on the first half of his lap and the butterfly in the second half. So how are we going to figure out how long he's swimming the front crawl and how long he's swimming the butterfly? Well, one of the ways we could do this is we could split this seven and a half minutes into three equal parts. Now it's just seven and a half divided by three, which of course is two and a half minutes each. Now, why did I split it into three? Well, because now what I can do is I can say on his way across the pool doing the front crawl, he's going to take two of these intervals. And on his way back, he's only going to take one. And notice that this two and a half minutes is half the time of this five minutes. So he's going to take five minutes doing the front crawl and he's only gonna take two and a half minutes doing the butterfly. And this is uh, in the 100 meter pool again. So what we could do is say five minutes, he's got that uh, front crawl and two and a half minutes on his way back, he's doing the butterfly. It's a steeper line segment because he's moving faster there. And we could just continue to do this thing over and over again. So uh, five minutes, there we go, doing the front crawl, and two and a half minutes back. Five minutes, front crawl, two and a half minutes, butterfly. And then once again, we have five minutes, front crawl, make sure I get that right, and two and a half minutes doing the butterfly stroke. And that's what our graph would look like. Of course, once again, just remember, these wouldn't actually be um, so sharp in reality because he does need to slow down a little bit when he turns around. 
There we go, some examples of drawing displacement time graphs.